Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. And today we're on Romans 13. Um, we're going to try to get through this book a little faster. So I've got so much I want to do with other books. But taking one chapter a week is pretty good though. It should, it should uh, instill in you or you know, develop in you the, the want to dig in deeper into Scripture. But Romans 13 verse 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. There is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. So every Christian is supposed to obey the government. It didn't ask if you agreed with the government, it said you have to obey the government. Because the government was instituted by God. So whatever government you're under, whether you're in America or, or Russia or you know India, whatever government's in play, God put it there for a reason. And you have to obey them. Now, the Bible says you have to obey the government until it goes against Scripture. Then you obey God rather than man. But then you take the punishment that comes with that. Okay? So number one, you obey the government you're under. And number two, you obey it because God put it there. Verse two, therefore, because of that, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. So if you resist... The authorities God put into play, you're going to get punished by that authority God put into play. So don't resist the government. Whether it's high taxes or things you don't agree with, you still got to obey until it goes against Scripture. Then you obey God, and then there will be punishment. But you take it for the glory of God, and you get rewarded for that. So you will incur judgment. So Christians need to get their mind off of government, onto Scripture, and onto the things of God, and spreading the gospel, and... and Glorifying God. Don't worry where the governments are going because they're all going to go. It's Satan's realm out there. Verse 3, For rulers are not a terror to, the, to good conduct, but to the bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you'll receive his approval. Now verse 3 says, Rulers aren't supposed to terror. They don't, governments and rulers aren't supposed to terrify the good people because, look, if you follow the law, you're generally not going to be bothered by the government. Right? I mean, it's real easy. Follow, be a law-abiding citizen and you won't have any fear of the government. Do what is good and you'll receive it to his approval. Four. And if, obviously, the other half of that is if you do what's bad, then you should fear the government because they're, God, they're God's tool to punish bad people. Four. For he is God's servant, that's the government, for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For well, he is the servant of God and an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Okay, verse 4 is pretty important because it says, But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. This sword, this word sword, is meaning the government has the ability to kill people. If you do wrong or you murder somebody, they have the authority by God to take your life. Now, most places around the world, and generally speaking, don't punish murderers anymore. The Bible says if you shed man's blood, by man your blood should be shed. So God ordains capital punishment. And when you do not punish, according to Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, if you do not punish people who do bad, all they do, you know what that does for society? When you do not, like, we'll just say a murder, somebody murdered somebody, and you throw them in jail instead of killing them. That's the proper punishment God instituted for killing somebody. Other criminals just think of more sin and more murder. It just builds and builds and builds when you don't punish sin. He gave the ability to governments to kill people who killed other people. That is ordained by God. Because he's a servant of God and an avenger who carries out the wrath on the wrong door. It's a picture of God's wrath. If governments kill people for murder, it's a picture of God's dishing his wrath out on that murder. That's why we do it. Again, if you don't punish people, you will, you will just drive. The wrongdoing will just go up and the sin will just go up and the murder rates will go up. The rapes will go up. All the stuff goes up when you don't punish bad people. Verse 5. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but also to avoid the sake of conscience. So for your conscience sake, so you can sleep in peace, you're supposed to obey the government. Because you avoid God's wrath, number one, you avoid the government's wrath. Verse 6. For because of this you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. And this is why you pay taxes. 
This is how they make their living, the government. Now you can say, well, they take too much taxes from me. Maybe so, but this is why you pay taxes. Even if it's high, you still pay taxes. You still obey the government because God put it in place. Seven, pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. So if you owe taxes to your government, pay them. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. If you owe revenue to the government, pay them. Respect to whom respect is owed. You're supposed to respect the governing authorities that God put into place. Honor to whom honor is owed. So any governing authority put in place, whether it's your local police station, your local government, or the federal government, whatever government's over you, respect. You respect them, you honor them, and, and you give them what's due to them, whatever they're asking, whether it's high or whether it's low, whether you agree or whether you don't. It gives honor to God when Christians follow governments and are law-abiding citizens. Eight, owe oh, no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Don't worry about money, don't worry about all the other stuff. If, if you're going to do anything in this world, be concentrated on loving your neighbor, right? The Bible could be condensed down into loving God with all your heart and love your neighbors yourself, right? You shouldn't be known for going against the government. You should be known for the love of God, spreading the love of God. Nine, for the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandments are all summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbors yourself. How can this be summed up in you shall love your neighbors yourself? Well, if you love your neighbor, you won't commit adultery. If you, love, if you love your neighbor, you won't commit murder. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal. If you love your neighbor, you won't covet. All the other, if you love everybody and, you, and your neighbor is anybody, you won't do any of this to them. And that's why it's all summed up under them. 10, love does no wrong to the neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. God commands us to love our neighbor. Whether you like them, whether they do good to you, you still love them. God lets it rain on the just and the unjust. He loves everyone. Even if they blast you, and be still in this lifetime. There's a judgment to come. And there's a hell for people that reject God. But in this lifetime, he gives good even to those that are bad to him. And we need to do the same. 11. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from your sleep. For the salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believe. This is saying to all Christians to wake up. Because when you're first saved, you're now nearer to your salvation. Because... I've been saved for 17 years, and now I'm 17 years closer to my salvation. I was saved, I'm being saved, and there's a salvation in the future when I die. I will be, you know, I will be there. So that's coming. I need to stay awake. To all Christians out there who are sleeping, stay awake, because he's coming back. 12, the night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. If you don't watch it in this world, and if you get your eyes off of Christ, you're going to start picking up things in this rotten world you're in. So Jesus is saying, let him go. Look to him because your salvation is near. This is why we don't have to fear death. There's people in this world that fear death because that's all they, you know, this life is all they got. So they, they know judgment's coming. But Christian judgment isn't coming. It's already been, Jesus already was judged and punished for your sins. 13, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual morality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. We're supposed to let us walk properly in the daytime. People, most people are good in the day. It's the night. When the night comes, they start doing all their sin. So what we do in the day, we need to do at night. We need to be good in the night, good in the day. We need to not walk in all this. The orgies, the drunkenness, sexual morality, sensuality, quarreling, jealousy. Let it all go and love your neighbors yourself, right? If you love your neighbors yourself, you won't commit any of these sins. And certainly love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's what the Bible says. If you do these, if you don't know what the Bible says, remember them two verses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbors yourself. If you do them two things, you fulfilled all the law. 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this, this is how you do all this. He doesn't, God never tells you to do something in your own power. He says to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means everything you know about the Lord, think about all these good things and put them on when you go outside. Look through Christ's glasses on everything. Everything that happens to you, you know God's in control of all things. You look through God-centered filter, everything you look at. 
you look at it as, as being from God, ordained by God, whether good or bad, you know God has sent it to you. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. There's the second part. There's three things. Don't make any provision for the flesh. If you have an issue with lust, then stay away from the magazine, stay away from the TV. Don't provide, don't do things purposely in your life that boil up sin inside of you. Whatever your issue is, stay away from it. Make no provision for it. Because if you do make provision for it, here it says, make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. If you make no provision for yourself, you won't gratify your lust, and you'll be, you'll be walking in the Spirit. If you put on the, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and everything you know about Him, take it to the world, spread the gospel, walk in the Spirit, meaning you're, you understand that, that you're not your own, you've denied yourself, you're trying to do everything the Lord wants you to do, and you're looking at everything as, God puts everything into your life every day. That's walking in the Spirit. How can you sum this up? Verse 13, submit to authorities. Once you do that, make no provision for your flesh. Wake up. Follow the government. Give them their taxes or due, because someday all this will be done. Love your neighbors, yourself, and, and walk in the Spirit out there. Put the Lord Jesus Christ on. He's inside of you, of you already. You've got to bring Him out. The more you live like Him, the more He comes out. The more... Every time you're obedient, you grow. Remember that. Every single time you're obedient, you grow. And every time you're obedient, you grow more powerful, more powerful. People see the Lord more. That's what it means to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And drop every sin that slows you down. Make no provision for the flesh. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye.